everybody, I'm Jane from Willow Blue Vintage and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial to show you how to make a little card tag like this um, which is based on the idea of an antique photograph album. So it's like a little booklet, it has images on the front and the back that are taken from antique um, cabinet cards and um, inside I've got a photograph that I've printed onto photograph paper attached in with these little corners like you would have in a photograph album and then one of these semi-transparent protective sheets. So I'll show you exactly how to make that. So the materials that you'll need. First of all you want to choose your images for the front and back of your card. So. I use these which are a pair of um, cabinet card backs. Um, there's lots of these in the French ephemera bundle, um, also in the favourite French things. But to find more, if you put photograph into the search bar on the premium site, you get quite a number of these so you can choose which ones you want to use. So when I printed mine out, I actually put them into a table. Um, and then hid the grid lines so it printed out with no lines around it. But that helped me to line them up because I found that the easiest way was to print them side by side with just a small gap between. Because then when you make the booklet, you can cut this out as one piece and fold it and that becomes the spine. Alternatively, you could just cut them out, print them out separately um, and, and then cut them out. So that's up to you. The size I've made these are about just under three inches by about four and a half, but size is entirely up to you. But what you do need to think about is the photograph that you're going to put in needs to be a little bit smaller than the cover. Um, so I chose this picture, which is also in the favourite French Things bundle of the Eiffel Tower. And I lined it up so that when I... Um, turned my printer paper over I got one of these backs of a cabinet card printed onto the back. If that's a bit fiddly you could just do it as two separate images and stick one of those on the back. So I've printed this on photograph paper so that it looks authentically like an old photograph. And then another bit of printing is whatever you want to put inside your booklet. So I've chosen a piece from the Delicate End Papers. Um, again, choose whatever design you want to use for that. So that's the various printing things that you need to do. And then I've got a piece of paper here which is actually from an antique photograph album. Um, so I'll be using that semi-transparent paper. If you have access to something like that, that's great. But if not, really don't worry because any sort of semi-transparent paper would be absolutely fine. So you could use some baking parchment, some tracing paper, any sort of tissue paper. Um, you know, this is just stuff that I've collected from things that have been wrapped that I, I keep for art and crafts. So some sort of semi-transparent paper. And then the corners that I've made here to hold the photograph in place are just a piece of cream old paper and I've put a layer of sellotape over it to strengthen it. So you'll need something like this, just a bit of paper with some sellotape. And then I've got this twine um, as the tie for my tag. So a piece of twine or a piece of string or even a piece of ribbon if you wanted to use ribbon instead. The whole card is strengthened, so the whole tag is strengthened with a piece of card. This is an old piece of packaging from Amazon. So you'll need something like that. You're going to need to punch a hole in the corner, so your hole punch. A pair of scissors for cutting things out. I've put some um, a piece of silk along the spine, really just for, for decoration. If you have something like that, or a bit of ribbon that you want to put on, or even a, another piece of paper if you wanted to put something over the spine, um, something about that size. So that's slightly longer than the height of the card. And I've distressed all of the edges using some distress ink and um, a sort of blender. This is one I made myself from an old cork and a piece of felt. 
And then whatever your favourite type of glue is, I'm using Mod Podge with a paintbrush. And then just a piece of old paper that I put to protect my desk when I'm gluing. So that's all the materials that you're going to need. So the first thing that we're going to do is cut out our front and back covers and attach them to a piece of cardboard. So I'm going to cut them just roughly to start. And remember, if you're doing it like me and leaving the central bit to fold, you're not going to be cutting down there. So I'm just going to use some Mod Podge and stick this onto my cardboard. Okay, now whilst that's drying, I'm going to trim down my photograph. Hmm. So I've still not managed to line mine up com completely um, correctly. That's a shame. Probably the best thing would have been to actually print that bit off separately. I'm not too worried though because that's going to be stuck inside the booklet um, so you won't see the bag at all. Okay so hopefully that's dried enough for me to cut it out. So now that it's stuck to the card I'm going to cut it out more accurately. Okay, so I've rounded all of the edges, um, they were rounded on the print, so I've just followed the line of the print and left this central section that's going to be the spine. So now that that's cut out, I'm going to glue my end paper to the reverse. Okay, so I'm making sure that that's really well stuck down and I'm going to trim off the excess. Okay, so that's really nicely stuck down. Just smooth it to make sure there's no air bubbles anywhere. And whilst it's easy to handle, whilst it's flat, I'm going to just distress the edges using some distress ink. And I'm also going to do the cut edges just to make sure that they blend in nicely. And the same on the reverse. I always do a little bit more on the corners because if something was old that's where they tend to be most aged. Okay so that's all stuck down and distressed and ready to fold. Right so the next thing we're going to do is fold the card in half so I'm just quite carefully bringing the edges together to make sure that it's accurately folded. If you have a bone folder you could use that or just use the edge of your scissors to run along to give a really nice, as sharp a fold as you can get. 
Okay, so that's ready. And I'm just going to punch my holes in at this point. With my um, hole punch, it's the card's too thick to do both pieces together, so I'm going to do them one by one. So I do the first one, and then to make sure the next one's in the right place, I actually go through the hole that I've just made and do the second layer. So they're both done. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is distress the photograph. Again, just using my distress ink and the blender. And I'm going to do just a little bit on the photograph itself as well. Just give the appearance that it's had a life. It's not just come straight out of my printer. Okay, so the photograph's ready. So I'm going to work out where that needs to go. So because I've already punched my hole, I can see that I don't want to have a corner covering that. So with my piece of paper that I've already put some sellotape over, I'm just going to cut out a rectangle to start and then work out what size the corner pieces need to be. So I'm going to cut a square, well, not quite a square, slightly more rectangle than square, and just place it over the corner of the photograph, and then I can work out what size I need to cut my triangles to make the corner holder. Like that. So it's just very slightly larger than the photograph. So I'm going to do two of those. I can use the first one as a template for the second. Okay, and then to put those in place, you could either use um, some tape if you wanted to, or I'm going to use just a small amount of my Mod Podge glue. And then I'm going to let that dry for quite a while. If you don't intend to ever take the photograph out, you could actually just stick the photograph in and stick the corners over the top. I'm right at the bottom of this Mod Podge, so I've got some bits that are a bit sort of thicker and gloopy. So I'm just putting a bit of it onto the edges. one there it's quite fiddly this bit try not to get the glue onto my fingers and keeping it on the paper and the next one there. Okay, so I'm just going to let those dry for a while. So whilst that's drying, I'm just going to show you something with the um, transparent papers. So as I say, I've got this one that's from an old photograph album and it's got a sort of pattern printed into it. Um, something you could do, and this isn't really sort of part of the tutorial, it's just ideas for you is a way of getting a pattern into some paper like that is you can use a stencil or any sort of patterned surface put a piece of paper over the top of it and then just lightly rub it with some sandpaper you don't want to do it hard enough that you get holes but you start to get the pattern showing through see the pattern 
the sort of holy pattern showing through. So that's just an idea really, um, if you wanted to get a pattern onto your transparent paper to use for the um, protective sheet. So, sorry, that was a bit of a side diversion. So the next thing we're going to do is cut our piece of paper to size that's going to be the protective sheet. And we want this to be just slightly smaller than the card. So first of all, I'm just sort of marking it with my nail. And I'm going to cut it out the same size as the card initially. Okay, so that's the same size. So now I'm just going to go around and trim off about a quarter of an inch all around. And then I'm going to need to trim it a little bit less, uh, a bit more, because I want it to avoid this um, hole punch hole. So I want it to tuck in nicely to the fold of the tag at that edge. It's slightly shorter on this edge. And then I'm going to cut it just to above the size of the photograph. Again, rounding the edge off nicely. Okay, so that's covering the photograph, which is what it's meant to do. It's meant to protect the photograph, but it's not obscuring the hole that the string's going to go through. So now I'm just going to put a very fine line of glue along that edge. Pressing it in place. And once it's in place, I'm just going to fold it back on itself so that when the booklet's opened, it sort of it flaps freely. It's not pressed down in front, you know, on top of the photograph. Okay. And then next, I'm going to put my piece of silk just over this piece of um, spine, simply because when I printed it, I've got this very white, very new looking um, bit of paper there that I don't particularly like. So I'm going to put my piece of silk over that spine. So I'm putting quite a lot of my glue Again, this is Mod Podge that I'm using, but use whatever glue you normally use for crafting. You want something that's strong enough to attach fabric. So with, this, with the tag bent, getting my very gluey piece of silk, and I've lined it up at the top edge and just slightly pushed it over to the front side smooth it down and then do the same at the back. And then I'm going to let that dry before I just trim off that end bit because it's easier to cut when the glue's dry. Okay, so that's dried now. So I'm just going to trim that bit of excess silk off. A little bit sticking at the top, but I quite like that sticking up. Okay, so that's all in place. Final thing now is just to put my piece of twine. So just feeding both ends through and bringing it back through the loop. There we are. A nice historic photo album style tag with the Eiffel Tower. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.